Oh hi, basically we can blame Norway. And that's just a blanket statement. Blame Norway for everything. Inflation, gerrymandering, why there hasn't been a great WrestleMania main event in five years. It's all Norway. And they also gave us the rat. Or at least the Norway rat happens to be the most predominant rat species. It's also known as the brown rat or what you see all over New York. I mean besides sin. Whatever you want to call it, the brown Norway rat lives on every continent on Earth except Antarctica so far. And yet if you look at the range of the rat, you'll notice a bizarre hole in its worldwide domination. That shape is the province of Alberta, which just so happens to be where I live and I couldn't be happier. I think I've shared this before, but I am comically or perhaps tragically petrified of rodents. Mice in particular, which made it incredibly hard living on a farm with grain bins. So that I wouldn't mistakenly see any, I would make this most obnoxious noise when I had to go fill up the pails to feed the cows. I'd like stomp, boom, 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 up to the door of the granary. I'd jiggle the latch, clack, 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 and I would bang on the door. Seriously, just bang on the door. Bath, bath, bath. And then I'd throw open the door, avert my gaze so that I wouldn't have to see any scuttling of the tiny mammals. And then finally, I'd scoop out the grain and be on my way. So that's how I dealt with mice. Just think of the meltdown I would have if I needed to face rats on a daily basis. It'd be like last week, literal vomit all the time. So from a young age, I've been so thankful to have been born into Alberta where I know I won't be surprisingly accosted by a furry vermin in the middle of the night. That's what Mardi Gras is for. But I never really stopped to think about why Alberta is rat free in the first place. So I did what I should have done years ago. I googled it. Now, I'm sure there's probably a more detailed history out there, but the government of Alberta's website does have a fairly in-depth article about why there are no rats in Alberta, which I need to share this actual first line from this actual government document. Norway rats are one of the most destructive creatures known to man. It's like the opening to a newsreel about how the Kaiser has gained more power in Europe. As it turns out though, the Norway rat did try to annex us and we were given no choice but to fight back. So as this graph shows, as humans began moving west to settle the prairies, the rats followed. And while the literature and propaganda that would soon follow focused on the destructive habits of the rat, the largest concern at first was that the rat could carry the plague. Which to be fair, was a valid concern, what with them spreading the literal plague. Now before there was a rat problem in Alberta, there was already legislation, the Agricultural Pests Act of Alberta of 1942 to be specific, which authorized the Minister of Agriculture to designate as a pest any animal that was likely to destroy crops or livestock. So when the brown wave started happening in the 1950s, there was already a law that allowed the Alberta government to act. Enter William Lobey, the hero of our story. And I wish I'd had enough time to create a parody of Hamilton, so just imagine I'm the albino version of Lin-Manuel Miranda and you're about to enjoy Act 1. Although no, I'm sorry, Act 2 is a mess and the ballet sequence between Lobey and the Rat King feels a bit unoriginal. Let me work on this and I'll release it in a few weeks after I've had a chance to punch up the script and had a bit of time to workshop it. Okay, so more than the Minister of Agriculture being able to declare what a pest was or not, what the act was able to do was mandate that each municipality and person had to destroy the pest. This means that if rats were found on somebody's farm and that farmer didn't destroy the rats, then the farmer could be fined or go to jail. Which might seem a bit overboard, but for me, I think it's entirely appropriate. In fact, I wouldn't be opposed to a punishment more fitting with the crime like the guillotine. But William Obey, as I mentioned, was the man behind the rat control plan when the province noticed the problem. Most of this was education provided to the public about best practices to kill rats, which included the first line of defense of most of society's ills, awareness. But then it also included the use of a relatively new substance, warfarin. If you've ever bought rat or mouse poison, this will be familiar to you as it's one of the primary ingredients in those poisons. Interestingly, warfarin is also used in medicine as a blood thinner, but given to humans in small doses so it doesn't make us bleed out. Which is how rat or mouse poison works. An overdose will cause the rodents to start to bleed without it coagulating, and eventually they just bleed out, which I'm sure is a totally quick and very painful way to die. Side note, rats and mice are now becoming resistant to warfarin, so now we're getting more potent poisons on the market, although I've been recommending lasers for years. I think the most buck wild fact is that because people were rightfully worried that children or other loved ones might come in contact with the warfarin and that they would immediately die, they were increasingly resistant to the idea of leaving poison all around the province. However, apparently an Alberta agriculture staff member ate some rolled oats with warfarin 
in it in front of a crowd to quell their concerns. Warfarin, part of a complete breakfast. Also, huge plot twist, that Alberta agricultural staff member was actually a giant rat and died immediately. Over a few years, the public became educated and prepared to fight the rat population. The first line of defense was between the Alberta and Saskatchewan border. Pest control inspectors checked every premise within the first 29 kilometers west of the border. They provided rat poison free of charge, they encouraged rat proofing of buildings, and destroyed any rat they came across. The program was aggressive, and William LeBay, over the first three years, made sure it was carried out to the letter. Look at how this graph changes. In 1959, there were 600 known rat infestations. By 1963, there was 300, and by 1980, there was 150. This was not something that happened overnight. Rats get busy after dark. By 2003, there was zero infestations, and even though there have been small outbreaks here and there over the years, the number of infestations have not grown past four since then, which is remarkable. From 600 to four. To this day, Alberta is very militant about rat control. Pest controllers from the government, if alerted to a rat infestation, are some of the quickest responders. Although rats can and are used in research facilities in Alberta, there is a lot of paperwork you need to fill out to do so. Pet rats are absolutely not allowed, and you can be fined severely if found out. The closest I've ever been to a rat was uh, the time I saw Donald Trump. <laughs> Political humor. No, the closest I've ever been to a rat was in my junior high science class. My science teacher had a zoo license and had a huge number of reptiles, birds, mammals, and other such things that we learned about. There were these huge Burmese pythons and boa constrictors. They fed on rats, so he bought frozen white rats, which he'd thaw on the lights heating some of the reptile cages. They had beady red eyes and looked like sad, small, deflated pillows like Donald Trump. I avoided them as much as I could. I really didn't know any of this history of the province until I read this article. I'll link to it in the description so you can find out more. But mostly, I'm glad that my province recognized the destructive nature of this scourge and took steps to rid our farms and cities of it. Hopefully, next will be those birds that wake me up at four in the morning. Our neighboring province, Saskatchewan, is only now trying to do its version of a rat eradication. Perhaps soon, all of Western Canada will be rat free. Except for our politicians. Am <laughs> I right? I'm, I'm right. But how about you? Any good rat stories? What are you going to tell me that's going to haunt my nightmares? Let me know down in the comments. Unless I'm swarmed by the minions of the Rat King, I should talk to you again next Thursday.